It's a dreary Labor Day, but in the Phone Dog offices, we're keeping it exciting with a dogfight battle. I'm Aaron Baker from PhoneDog.com, and today I'm pitting the Moto X against the Apple iPhone 5. It's Google versus Apple, and we're putting them together. Who's going to win? Let's find out in the dogfight. Just when you thought the battle was over between the iPhone 5 and Android devices, we're bringing it back for what's most likely going to be the last dogfight before the replacement to the Apple iPhone 5. But this, two devices very similar in size, and for a lot of people, I think two devices very similar in terms of functionality. So if you're going, you know, you're looking for the Moto X, you might be looking for the iPhone 5 as well, be it for a size purpose or whatever the case may be. This is the Moto X versus the Apple iPhone 5 dogfight battle, and I'm doing something a little bit different in this dogfight. Fight. In part one, we're going to talk about the hardware. In part two, we'll talk about the software. Let me know what you think of the new format on Twitter at PhoneDog underscore Aaron or on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Hi Aaron Baker. But this, Moto X versus iPhone 5. Google's version of the iPhone, if you will, in a lot of different ways. Sure, they've got the Nexus 4 and they've got the Google Play Experience program with the HTC One and the Galaxy S4, but this is the first device that's really come out, along with the Droid devices on Verizon, that has Google's design theory as part of Motorola. If you recall, they bought Motorola some time ago and they've been working behind the scenes to get a device that's very similar to the stock Google experience but has kind of that Google design hand in it if you will and you notice that all throughout the Moto X so even though Motorola is technically a separate company this is as close as it gets to getting a Google device that's designed by Google and has Android which is obviously made by Google then of course you have the Apple iPhone 5 all made in house Apple makes the product Apple makes the software and for a lot of people that's a huge benefit let's take a look at the hardware and the dogfight but before I get too far in Special thanks to our partners at Best Buy Mobile because they're hooking us up with free phones like this that we give to you for free on PhoneDog.com. So check it out. It's the One Paw Bandit giveaway game on PhoneDog.com. When you walk into Best Buy Mobile, they'll make sure you walk out working with either of these devices. If you're spending the Labor Day in Best Buy getting a device, they'll make sure your email, your web, your contacts, your iTunes store, your app store, and more are set up and ready to go at Best Buy Mobile. So. Really excited about this dogfight because, again, this is as close as it gets to being a Google device versus an all Apple device. So let's take a look at the specs. First of all, we'll talk about hardware and we'll talk about specs while we're doing that. The Moto X has a 1.7 gigahertz dual core CPU with Motorola's X8 architecture here. So even though it has a dual core CPU, don't let that deter you. Motorola's X8 architecture supports in a couple of different ways where they, they tout up to eight cores on the CPU. So even though it's a dual core CPU, Motorola's X8 architecture is running in the background. And this device, I can tell you after working with it, not only as part of the 30 day challenge, but working with it just in general, I've been really impressed with the performance of this device. It runs a near stock version of Android and stock for a lot of people that have asked in the comments is a version of Android that's without any carrier customizations or bloatware or anything of that nature or a user interface running on top. And sure you get some AT&T stuff, out of the box in this device. This is an AT&T device. You get some things like my AT&T, but it's relatively stock. You get, of course, visual voicemail as well, but relatively stock in comparison to something like TouchWiz on the Samsung Galaxy S4 or Sense5 on the HTC One. Now, I can make a case all day long. If you know me, you know how much I love user interfaces. I think they make it incredibly easy for the user. And then on top of that, I really enjoy some of the software value adds, but I think there's some great stuff here as well. And also there are some hidden software goodies that really make the Moto X a useful device, which we'll talk about in part two. Then you have the Apple iPhone 5 over here, and we'll go back to talking about specs of this just briefly here. 4.7 inch, 720p HD display, Pixel wise, 720 by 1280 pixels here. It's 4.7 inches. You've got a 10 megapixel camera on the back with 1080p HD recording, a 2200 milliamp hour non removable battery. You have the option of 16 or 32 gigabyte variants through the Moto Maker. This is a 16 gigabyte variant. We'll take a look at how much of that storage is available a little bit later. Two gigabytes of RAM. And then you got a front facing camera as well on Android 4.2.2. Then over here you have the Apple A6 CPU running in the Apple iPhone 5. It's clocked at somewhere between 1.2 and 1.3 gigahertz. You've got an eight megapixel camera on the back with 1080p HD recording, a four inch display on this device, retina display, 640 by 1136 pixels. It's four inches again. And then in the back you've got of course, your battery, this one can come up to, up to 16, 32, or 64 gigabytes of storage. This is the 32 gigabyte AT&T version, in case you're keeping track at home. But then again, battery in the back, and then you've got, running on this one, Apple's iOS 7 
running in beta. So keep in mind it is a beta version. There may be some bugs in the software, which we'll talk about again in part two. But talking about hardware here between these two devices, first of all, you'll notice that this one's customized as a result of the Moto Maker program. Now, Moto Maker allows you to go on, and this is something that's really unique to the Moto X. You can go online to Moto Maker program, and you can design your own Moto X provided that you're on AT&T. Unfortunately, while the device is available through Verizon and Sprint, you can only get it right now in white or in black on Sprint or on Verizon. But if you're on AT&T, you can go in the store today and get the white or black version, or you can purchase a pin code and design one of these through the Moto Maker application online. You'll see the AT&T logo still comes intact regardless of the customizations, but you can really make this device your own by choosing the back plate, by choosing the accent colors, and by choosing the front plate as well between black or white. So in the case of this one, I chose the navy blue, chose the orange accents, which you'll see are around the camera and around on the buttons, and I chose the, bl uh, the black front. Think back to 2000 and you remember the Nokia 5100 series and all those ones with snap Snappable face plates, which you change the color. That's kind of what Motorola is going for here, but it's very much a 2013 version of it with it being designed in a factory in Fort Worth, not too far from my office, actually about 30 miles from my office. And you can design several different colors. Now you get a ton of different colors for the back plate. You get quite a few options for the accent colors as well. And then on the front, you get your choice between black and white. But they also take the customization process further with some cool little things like the ability to customize the startup screen and add your own message. Coming soon, the ability to add custom text to the back of the device. And one of my personal favorites, just a cool little touch, the ability to choose between a white or black charger in the box. So if you get a white front plate, for example, you can get a white charger. If you get the black one like I did, you can opt for the black charger. Over here, beautiful design, metal on the back, Scuffs a little bit easily, but still really a gorgeous device all around here with metal on the sides. iPhone 5 still does a great job in the design department. This phone is beautiful, feels great in the hand. But what I like about this one is it feels even better in the hand from a usability and an ergonomics perspective. It's slightly curved, as you can see here. And up top, you've got your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, your power button, your volume rocker, and then down here, your micro USB charging port. But you can see that it's curved and kind of sloped at the bottom here. And I know I've said this a couple of times, but it kind of is, uh, resembles, if you will, an Apple Magic Mouse in terms of the overall feel of the device. And Motorola has done a really nice thing here with the Motorola logo. There's an indentation, which is a great place for you to rest your index finger when you're on long phone calls. So this thing is pocketable with a 4.7 inch display. Travel continues to be good, and this thing feels great in the hand. So from a feel in the hand perspective, this one feels better than the iPhone 5. For long phone calls, be it conference calls or long phone calls with family that don't live in the area, this is really nice to hold up to your ear and talk for a long time. Apple's iPhone 5, I love the beautiful, it's a very beautiful device. I love the way it looks and feels, but in the hand, it's definitely a little bit less than this one. It's definitely got more of a boxy feel, if you will, between the sides and between the back. It fits great in the hand, don't get me wrong, and the travel continues to be very good on this device, but for a lot of people, I think one, four inches display-wise is a little bit too small in today's world, and then also, holding it up against your ear, still has kind of a boxy feel in comparison to this, which has the nice curved angles from top to bottom and from side to side. Stay tuned for part two. We'll talk about the software on these devices. Android 4.2.2 versus Apple's iOS 7, which is still in beta and is expected to be released very soon. Which one's the best? Stay tuned for part two.